Now, how much are you paying? Six pound a week. All this. And is this the only cost you have? No, we have uh, electricity, pay for electricity. That's, that's all here, you know, electricity and the rent. Yeah. And you've been here for how long? About eight weeks, nine weeks. Now what, apart from the fact that it's small, what's the general condition of this room? Well, it's your point ringing wet, it's damp, it's walking with moist. Tommy and Margaret lived in the Bluebell estate, but there was no question after marriage of moving in with either of their parents. There was no room. For four months, the Smiths lived in a two-room flat over this butcher shop in Camden Street. It was cold, damp, and unsuitable for them, and they were glad to leave it and move to this room in Inchicore. It didn't, it didn't look too bad, you know. It looked clean and... It was much better than the one we had in Camden Street. It looked much cleaner, cleaner, but it was only when we were in it a week or two we started finding the faults in it. What proportion of your wages do you spend? Half my wages on the rent. And then we have to pay... Pay for the, the electricity. electricity, that's about another pound. That's well, I earn, I come out of work with 12 pound a week. That's seven pounds into the flat a week, and a five pound left. It is not possible for a man, his wife, and child to live for a week on five pounds. But the Smiths must try the impossible. A family in Dublin without accommodation is in no position to bargain. Their real hope a council house soon. There are many others like the Smiths. Dublin Corporation has a housing list of 5,000. Many of them live in rented flats or bed sitters. There are 11,000 weddings in Dublin each year. Many couples can't afford a house. Add to them the elderly, the students, the transient young men and women, and a picture emerges. There is an acute shortage of accommodation. Did you get the flat? No, we're just too late. It has been taken. Well, how many flats have you looked at? About three or four in this last three or four days. And some of them are very bad. They're not worth their money. It's terrible hard to get a flat. We're always too late or else they're too dear, too expensive. Prices are too high in this flat or too small. What kind of prices? Uh, well, six is, seems to be the minimum for just one room. And then there's this very small, like a camp and cooper in there or something like that. That's what you'll get. How many flats have you looked at so far? Well, I've phone them, I phoned them about 12 today and about 15 yesterday and they all either don't want married couples or you know the rent is £8 and that just for maybe one room and a kitchen. How many flats have you looked at tonight? Tonight we've looked at two just so far. You advertised a flat tonight, what kind of a response have you got to it? Pretty good response, very, very, lots of people as you can see calling the whole night you know. Mm. How many flats do you have altogether? This. There's eight in this house here. Eight, eight flats? Eight, yeah. Eight bedsitters. One flat. You're advertising a bedsitter. How much are you charging bedsitter. for it? Seven pounds. Well, why did you decide on a figure of seven pounds? Well, I think it's a, it's a fair figure. And uh, we don't have any, I don't have any bother uh, getting clients for, for this. Perhaps it's fair, but it's an arbitrary figure. The landlords. Furnished flats represent the bulk of Dublin's rented accommodation. Yet, there is virtually no control over prices and standards. There is no rent tribunal, as in Britain, to arbitrate in such matters and fix a fair rent, though the Landlord and Tenant Commission may urge the creation of one. Landlords will resist it. The rents of 20,000 dwellings are already rigidly controlled despite soaring maintenance costs. A disastrous policy in their eyes and one which has led to a housing shortage.